Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff. My name's Jason, and this is the April Roundup. So all in all, April actually went uh, a bit smoother than March did. Uh, and as a result, we've got two model builds completed during April. Um, so that was really good. We got the U9 finished, um, and she ended up looking okay, all in all. I was quite happy with, with that build. Um, and we finally got some paint on the uh, uh, brand new Airfix Cromwell and got that over the line as well. So that was two builds we've, we've finished, um, and those two builds got replaced by um, the Lysande, um, which has become a double build. <laughs> um, which was a last minute decision but I think we'll just it just makes it a little bit more interesting um, and as I'm going to build two kits might as well do it at the same time so the Lysander is progressing well um, and we're now at that point where we're going to put some paint on the on the cockpit and, and so on and so forth uh, and the other major thing that we did on the channel in April was the battle of the 132s um, and that was you know what it was just trying to think of something a little bit different to link some first impressions videos together. I've been doing quite a lot of those um, at the moment. Um, they make nice little fillers in between build updates. Uh, as you know, the, the builds get filmed over a period of time and then stitched together, so you might get two or three weeks worth stuck together. Um, uh, so it's good to have something else that I can post out. So that they're sort of filling a vacuum in, in the build, if you like, um, right now. Whereas um, I've got one or two other ideas that when we slow down the pace of the uh, first impressions and start taking up the slack with uh, one or two other ideas, such as the um, focus on tools, um, which has gone down quite well. Um, so we'll, we'll do some more of those. So yeah, uh, all in all, uh, April was a, a, a good month. So build-wise, um, Arizona's uh, pushed on behind the scenes and it won't be long before you see a video of that um, and war spite we got the deck on and we finished painting the the hull um, and I'm still in two minds as to whether I'm going to weather or not so whether to weather or not to weather is sort of where I am with that I, I'm leaning more towards not weathering um, I've, most of my ship builds recently have been weathered and um, it'd be nice to perhaps do a nice clean one um, for a change uh, and also so um, a rare month in as much as I didn't add anything to the stash and this year the plan is to add very little to the stash so I've got two kits on pre-order at the moment the, the new 172 um, Vulcan from Airfix which could come out anytime um, and their 135 scale um, ambulance the KT so looking forward to both of those, um, Katie's back end of the year, maybe even early next year at this rate. But um, they're the only two planned additions to, to the stash. Um, and the reason is I'm putting, I'm putting funds away for one or two other bits and pieces, um, hobby related. Um, so we can upgrade some, uh, some bits of kit. Um, but and possibly upgrade the lighting from a filming. So at the moment we're using a combination of natural light and um, like a, my little lamp. Um, and sometimes I'm getting some issues with shadow when it's sunny outside. So I work in a kitchen so I'm a bit limited. I can't put a lighting rig up like uh, some other people do who've got a permanent home in a room that's dedicated to it. I, I've not got that luxury. Like lots and lots of modellers I have to find a little corner um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute because during the course of this month I've had a number of comments about how many kits I've got on the go, um, how big my model kit display must be, my built models and how many kits I've got in my stash. So let's deal with all that and we'll go and have a look. So let's start with how many builds I've got on the go and why. So um, I think I've mentioned this before but for those new subscribers what I generally do is have no no more than four builds on the go 
you might go, four? How can you do four? Uh, I know some of you love to have one build on the go when you focus on it. I can't do that. I used to have to do that when, when the funds only allowed me to buy one model at a time. I'd do that, and what would happen is when I got to a bit that I was getting a bit fed up with or I was getting a bit boring, I'd end up having a break from building models altogether because I had nothing else to do. And I'd have to get myself in the mood to do that. Well, that's no longer an issue for me. So I have the luxury of a stash, which means I have the luxury of having more than one build on the go. So I tend to have a lar one large project and that's a slow build. And at the moment, that's my Arizona and that's my slow build. Um, and, it, and I sort of dip in and out of it. It's a big project. I don't want to rush it. Um, and I do bits of it when I'm in the mood, when the kids aren't around, when you know, when I've got a day's holiday and I'm not planning to do anything, that's what I'll do. Um, then I tend to have um, a, a medium size build, so that's typically a 1350 scale warship, or could be um, a more complex 148 scale aircraft, maybe, or, or whatever. Um, so at the moment, that is my war spy build. Um, so that's a medium build, it will get completed before the Arizona is completed, it, go, it moves on at a bit of a, a bigger pace. But when the paint's drying on that, or I'm fed up with trying to fit the scale decks of it, for example, then um, I like to have um, a quick build. So it's something I can do in between, so a small build. So that's quite often a, a 172 scale um, fighter or something like that. Right now, that's my roadster. Um, so uh, we started that and then the Cromwell came along and I wanted to build that quickly so that people could see it um, as it was a new tool, new release. Um, so that paused the roadster, but normally that, that roadster would build would be the quick build. It's the one I can dip in and out of. And, you know, it's 124 scale, so it, it it's not a small scale, but it's a relatively small kit with a relatively small uh, part count. It has a couple of figures, so I can dip in and out. And sort of have it on the desk and do a little bit while I'm waiting for other other bits to, to do. So that's sort of how I work. Now my, my fourth kit, kit number four, um, always used to be a, a wooden model ship. Now I had a little bit of a break from uh, the wooden ships. I used to do all of my modelling in the attic. I had a space laid out in the attic and I had one end of the attic was dedicated to painting. I had my paint booth there with it, with the extraction system set up, and I had my airbrushes permanently set up, um, and it wrote, worked really well. And then at the other end, I had my actual sort of build desk with all my tools to hand, so on and so forth, and 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 it worked really well. And then I had um, a desk to the side of that where I built my wooden model ships. So. Um, and, and underneath that desk was all the tools, um, all the power tools like my lathe and my, my sanding um, and my, my circular saw and all those sort of bits and pieces that I might use from time to time. Um, and it worked really well uh, initially, but then what happened was increasingly I was struggling with the light because my eyes started deteriorating and maybe working in the attic triggered that. Um, and, and I was having problems with temperature control so though there was temperature control in there in the summer it was often too humid for for um, using an airbrush so that was limiting what i could do and in the winter it was often too cold um, sometimes even too cold to just just work full full stop um, so it was giving me all sorts of problems and then i had issues with pests as well we had a wasp's nest for example and i was just getting frustrated so we moved down to the kitchen um, and although in some ways it's less flexible because the table has to be cleared from time to time for people to eat and, and so on and so forth, um, it actually has worked out um, better in terms of light and flexibility of what I'm building. Uh, and, I, and I build more and have a, 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 um, a quicker build rate as a result of that move. So um, for, it's probably been about two years since I've had a, a wooden model ship build on the go um, and so that gap got filled by another plastic kit and at the moment that's the Lysander build. So what we're doing is we're going to be um, running the builds down a little bit. So um, we finished two last uh, in, in April 
and we've started one. When the roadster finishes, we won't be replacing that. Um, so what will replace, uh, well, we won't be replacing it with a plastic build. We will be replacing it with my more traditional wood build. And I've been waiting for it to warm up. And as you may see here in the background, HMS Fly has started. So um, last weekend, the weather improved, which meant I could do some bits and pieces outside, some of the sanding, um, I prefer to do outside. Um, when I was in the attic, I could do it and then hoover it up. But in the kitchen, that's a bit more problematic. Um, so that is on the go. So we'll be back to my normal four builds, one of which being a wood ship. Now, um, I'm not quite sure how we're going to go around the, the uh, videos of that. I've, I've got three videos now, or two in the bag, one, the third one nearly in the bag. Um, but exactly how that's going to look, yeah, I don't know, and we'll talk about that in the introduction um, to the build. So that's where we are in, in April. Um, so a pretty good month, all in all, and that is why I have so many builds on the go. I don't like to get bored, and I don't like to have an excuse to stop building. And for me, the joy of modelling is building stuff. I know you have to paint them, so I paint them, but... You know, if I could get away with not, I probably would. Um, but there you go. So, the other questions were my display and my stash. Well, the stash is still in the attic. So let's go and have a look at the stash. is in two locations. And this is, officially this is the overflow um, because my stash grew beyond um, what it was going to do. So... Um, some of the kits that are out here have been pulled out of the stash ready for doing some first impression reviews. So we will see those coming along soon. Um, and if there's anything there that you see that you fancy a first impressions view of, let me know. There's a, I only have one uh, Fujima kit and that's it there. Two hundred and fifty quid's worth. Not that I paid that, but that's what you'd pay going market rate in the UK. Now, some of these you will have seen. Some of them you won't. We've got Take on King Tiger with interior. Um, we've got an old Atari Jeep, which we're going to do as a zombie diorama. Um, we've got some streets and bits and pieces, and somewhere in there we've got a one three fifty. Titanic, the best Titanic model you can get still, there it is, you can just about see it, uh, which has lighting and etch and 3D parts and all sorts of this stuff. This is my main stash over here. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that's another shelf queen there, but it's not. Um, I actually bought this, it's the Victory Models uh, bomb vessel, uh, Grinaldo is it called? And I actually bought this off a fella who'd already started it. Um, and this is as far as he'd built up. Um, and I think it's been damaged. Nothing that can't be rectified. Um, he's not really... Um, he's not really understood what he needs to do. And um, we've got a bit of lumpy sides. And I think he just gave up on it as a bad job. Um, so I got it at a discounted price, but basically what he doesn't know, but I know, is I can steam that um, with a kettle, get this off, and go back to these ribs and fare them again properly. Um, and then we can repair the damage. Um, jobs are good, and I've saved myself about half price on that kit. So what else have we got in the stash? Well, you've seen that recently. So, Bristol Beaufort, Marauder, got a Dragon Premium Edition kit, that means you get some etch, Black Widow, Fairy Swordfish, uh, Bunny Fighter Edition, we're going to have a bit of fun with that, P38, Prince Eugen, if we do a battle of the 1350s, that will be in there. Yeah, that, that kit's about that big. Mosquito, 132. 
classic Great Western. Catalina, we recently, oh, you might not have seen it, but I've done a review video for that, first impressions. Uh, got a Tamiya Fox Wolf, that's an old kit, that. Um, Rotodyne, Warhawk, 109. Uh, forget what that is, Type 42, is it? Um, then we have HMS Illustrious, looking forward to that. Hipper, somewhere in there is Bluka. There's the Hood, there's the Scharnhorst, Condorcet, some of these you've seen. Over here I've got a couple of wood and multimedia trams, Berlin and London. I've got a diorama for the Berlin tram um, and then we've got a u-boat there Let's see what else have we got uh, there's my wing wings kit then we've got a Ch Chinese junk wooden kit typhoon car door 124 a load of 172 kits and then behind that we have some bigger kit so in there there's a Raspberry Ripple, Lancaster, um, and then we've got 109, Mustang, 190, uh, we've got the Caldercraft kit and the Mary Rose which is beautiful, we've got a Greek Beam, uh, Independence, there's a Viking Longboat, there's a Windermere um, Riverboat, that's a little uh, 1600 scale resin kit of HMS Duchess in the Australian service, but uh, I'm going to convert it to the UK service as my grandfather was on it. Um, what else have we got? Black print. And there's more stuff at the back. There you go. Now behind this um, is another compartment of the attic. Uh, where I have all the boxes with the stuff that I rotate um, and we're in the process of sorting that out as well. So there you have it. That is my stash more or less. More or less. Um, so as I say at the moment we're in the process of moving things around so they will get stacked much better than that um, in the fullness of time. And if we go over here we have my bench of um, shelf queens. So I've, I have four shelf queens there. So the first one is the 144 scale Ravel Flower Class Corvette, the one that Steve's about to build. And Steve, if you are watching, you need to get yourself some of these. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, and they also do some boats and they do the different launch types um, and they also do a very nice resin hedgehog which looks much better than the kit one anyway we digress um, behind that is one 200 scale Macassar which um, Going to be looking at restarting that soonish. These have all stopped for various different reasons, um, either waiting for parts or, or whatever. Um, then we have the Atlantic models HMS Newcastle, which I'm actually building as HMS Liverpool, I think. I seem to remember. Um, so that is nearly done, actually. We're at sort of adding etch to that. Um, and then behind that is Trumpeter's 1200 Bismarck, and I had a major issue with the deck. So I then decided to wait for the scale decks, which I've done, by which time I'd moved my builds on, um, and it's been sat there ever since. But also, I started this before Pontos brought their stuff out. I've subsequently got the Pontos kits, so it needs a full restart. That is my 
Shelf Most print. of my builds, when they're not on display, get put in boxes, but I do have some on display up here, which are sort of um, the ones I'm less pleased with, or were just kit bashers, which includes this Ravel Man of War, which was a, something I built as a kid, actually. Um, and one of the few that have survived from my childhood. Um, and you can see even back then I replaced the plastic with with wood. I never got around to doing the rat lines. Still, um, anyway, uh, we have the motorhead bomber there, which um, I did with an engine on fire, and the Ravel Iron Maiden Spitfire. Um, there's a kit bash there. I didn't paint that one. Just flung it together. Um, Airfixer's classic kit, terribly inaccurate, <laughs> but was fun to put together. And then under here, got another Ravel kit there, 132 scale. I think that, again, I wouldn't bother painting that, it's not good enough. I think a fairly modest collection of kits, you would agree. Um, yeah. So um, there are some kits in there you just couldn't see. So there is um, a 116 Tamiya radio controlled King Tiger tank in there. Um, and there is a Billings um, HMS Warrior, which is about 1.6 meters long, wooden ship kit in there, which right now is too big for me to, to actually build. I need the kids to move out and, and so I can grab one of the bedrooms as a modeling space, and then we can crack on with that one. Um, and there's, uh, I've got uh, Dean's Marine St. Olaf, which is a ginormous, supposed to be for radio control, I'll do it as a static hospital ship, fiberglass hull, um, plastic, brass and white metal construction. Beautiful, um, very, very different to anything I've done before. Um, but it's sat there, just collecting dust, waiting for the moment. Um, so there's some bigger stuff that you couldn't see because it was around the other side. Um, so when it comes to displaying the models, um, space is a premium. Um, have one or two on display um, uh, around the house. So we we have um, HMS Pickle on display in the window in the living room. I'm going to show you HMS Pickle in a minute because we're going to talk about HMS Fly. So I'll show you another wooden model ship. A lot makes sense. A lot makes sense. Um, the kids' bedrooms also have high-level shelves um, with uh, models either on or expected to be on. So there's a shelf in, in Alice's bedroom where Arizona's going to go. There's a shelf in uh, Daisy's bedroom where the hood at some point will go um, if they don't move out first. Um, so other than that, everything else is displayed in um, our bedroom. Um, so I have a display case and I have a, a, a couple of shelves um, and I've bought some acrylic stands to bulk up how many I can have on display. Um, but what the plan is, uh, what I generally do is rotate them. So every time I finish one, um, we put that on, we change the display around, we give everything a clean and dust it all down and give the models a clean. And then some of them will get boxed up and put in the attic and some that are in boxes in the attic will come down and go on display. So the display gets refreshed every six, eight weeks maybe when, when a model gets built. So what you're going to see is what I've got on display right now at, the, at this moment in time. And uh, when the Roadster um, gets finished, we'll be boxing some up and moving some around. So that's sort of the, the plan. So... Let's go and have a look at the model display. So this is some of my uh, models that are currently on display. What I tend to do is rotate them a little bit and as a new one comes along I reorganise. Some come out of storage and go on the shelf. Some go from the shelf to the storage. So you'll recognise the JU52, that was the first one we finished on the channel. And you'll recognise the Type 45. There's Trumpeter's Exeter behind it, Airfixer's beautiful Wellington um, behind that. Um, I think it's a take on the B2, the uh, trailer and truck for it, the Hanamag 100 are in the attic and storage at the minute. Down below there we've got um, Sadlitz, you'll recognise U9 and the Cromwell, uh, and then we've got the Graf Speed. 
Both Exeter and Graf B. Um, I've had a little damage recently when my daughter bumped her head on the shelf. Um, so they need a little bit of repair. Then here we have the San Francisco 2. This is one of the ships that sailed in the Spanish Armada. Um, yeah, quite. it was the first ship I've done um, unpainted. So, yeah, it's all right. Um, then below I have a display case with more stuff in and again. This gets rotated. I'm more interested in the building than the displaying. Um, but I haven't made aircraft models for a long, long time, 30 years. And then that little hurricane that you see there, little Airfix 172 hurricane, um, my girls bought it me for Christmas and I loved it. And then I did quite a lot. Um, so I've got our Bolton Paul Defiant, Mustang, um, the Spitfire there, you can see is Edwards and then the Japanese aircraft in surrender markings is the current Airfix model club kit then below that we have Sea King uh, it was a bit of a dog of a kit that um, all of those are Airfix And then we have here HMS Barham, which is one of the ships my grandfather served on for a short period of time. He served on that one um, as a youngster. A bit difficult to see in the light. And then below that I have a diorama, um, which I built um, last year. We have. That's the Tamiya version of the original Atari kit. So the Tamiya version has some upgrades, had an aluminium barrel, put some weld seams on. And the crew's at rest there, one of them playing with a cat. Um, I figure his, his hand has recently dropped off, so that needs to be glued back on. Um, but you can see there's his hand attached to his bundle. And then we have the old Airfix double O scale Stevenson's rocket. Um, girls got me this for my 50th birthday. Um, so it's a snap together kit that. I think, is it take on more Bandai? I can't remember. Uh, one, 144 scale. So there's a little story behind that. As a kid, um, when the Empire Strikes Back came out, I want, that was on my top of my Christmas list for about three years, and I never got one. So the kids bought me one for my 50th. Um, the markings are, are made up by me, and put a little bit of blast marks on there. Yeah, it looked really quite good. That did. Um, so the kits there. The front one is an Edward kit. And it's supposed to have green wings, but I preferred it red all over. Um, yeah, it's be pretty nice that. And then behind that is the last year's Airfix Tiger Moth release, which is a lovely, lovely kit to put together. Really nice. And then below that is one of the fa my favourite kits of all time, which is Airfix's Walrus. This is the Silver Wings version. We'll get that out and, and do some close pictures of that as well. Um, below that I have um, Tommy's Ward diorama for an artillery piece, Tamiya's um, tank which is moated, um, I think there's a battery in it so it probably goes, I don't remember the manufacturer of the Jim Clark Formula One car there, um, I haven't had that one out for a while so I got that out a bit more recently. There we go, closer look at my uh, diorama that's called Gas. So it's set First World War, um, and the story is that the Ordnance Department was taking up provisions to the front line um, and broke down, which is why the engine cover is off. And then they went to get some help, having realised that they couldn't restart it. Um, 
And then subsequently there was a gas attack and so infantry was being rushed to the front line. And you can see there, they've all got their gas masks on. So that was the idea. Um, the top was made out of tissue paper. You have to use the right type of tissue paper. The stuff you used to get in shoe boxes. Um, but the craft stuff you can get, coloured craft tissue paper, is just as good because that's what I've used there. Um, I used a yellow one. Um, the tree stumps are all resin. A little roadside chapel thing there uh, was resin. So yeah, it's a nice little kit, ICM kit, um, and I got a small sheet of etch from Russia. There we go. So the other diorama is the uh, armoured car. Like I said, this is the Tamiya release, and that's a straight box build. Uh, the figures, I think, were mini art, might, might be wrong there. Um, and the base was a resin base, came fully like that, just needed to paint it. Um, and it was mounted on a picture frame, as you can see. Um, and I think, yeah, I think the figure in the middle of those three there actually came with a kit. Yeah, uh, the only addition to the kit for me was the smoke um, smoke launcher cables that run up there. When you look at period pictures, that's how it was done. Yeah, I was quite happy with that one. And then we'll have a closer look at this. Um, today, this is my favourite model kit build of all time. Which is the Airfix um, 148 Walrus. Um, this is the Silver Wings version. Went together beautifully, lots of interior detail. I did add Edward Etch. Rigging was done with a um, combination of stretch sprue and easy line. So, there we go, get nice and close so you can see the imperfections. If you look in the window there, you'll see in the map there, um, and in the right light, you can see that I scratch built a little plotter for the table as well. Very nice detailed engine. Really lovely detailed interior. I added the rope myself out of my stock. You can see down there, there's the anchor. And the wheels actually, with the spokes on, are how this particular aircraft was first built from the factory and then they replaced it when it went on the ship which I think was HMS Devonshire um, so they replaced them and took the spokes out because the spokes would get damaged uh, potentially replaced the hubs um, so those were um, Edward Brassin yeah lovely kit if you've not built it and you like aircraft build it it's a must, must build kit this. So the other thing that I've been doing in April is putting some thought as to what's going to come next and what's going to happen in May. So um, what's going to follow on from the current bills? Well, I think I've said before, when Arizona finishes, the plan is Trumpeters 1200 Bismarck. Um, and you will have just seen that in my Shelf Queens. Uh, we're going to do something with the Shelf Queens. Um, we'll talk about that in another video probably. Um, but the, what happened with the Trumpeter Bismarck is basically it got started as soon as it came out. Then the aftermarket stuff came out, so I sort of stopped it. And at the, um, I got the KA set and I started building it with that. Uh, and I had some issues with it and I had 
particularly had issues with the deck uh, raising. Now, maybe I've not fitted it properly, but I've had an issue with the adhesive as well. And that could have been how I've stored it um, because I was between houses and, and, and stuff for a period of time. Um, and it may be that it, you know, the temperature affected it. I don't know. Um, but I decided to park it um, and that's allowed me to collect the, the Pontos stuff. So I've got all the Edward, all the KA, all the Pontos. So my plan is um, we're going to relaunch that um, again. Um, it means stripping down. I want to do further modifications to the hull that I didn't do first time. So it'll be a big project. Um, and we'll talk all about that when we get Arizona done. So that's, that's probably winter this year. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at that. Um, however, um, something that's related to that in in May, obviously, is the 80th anniversary of the sinking of the Bismarck and the sinking of the Hood. Um, and this month, April, unfortunately, um, is the first anniversary of the death of my grandfather, who passed away April last year from COVID, along with 50% of his nursing home within two or three weeks. Um, he was 101. Um, so even if the hospital hadn't refused to take him uh, in with COVID, I, I don't think he would have um, survived it. You know, uh, he'd had a good innings. Certainly COVID took him earlier. He'd probably still be with us if it wasn't for COVID. He was quite fit and well, mentally very fit. Um, however, um, the link here uh, with the Bismarck is that my grandfather um, joined the Navy in 1932 and he stayed in the Navy until 1977. He, he spent his whole working career in the Navy. Um, and when the war broke out um, in 1939, he was serving on HMS Antony, which is an A-class destroyer. It turns out that HMS Antony, um, and this is her here, was his favourite ship of all the ships he served on, and he served on a lot of ships during his, his active career. Um, that, was, that was his favourite ship, and he preferred destroyers um, to the larger cruisers and battleships that he served on because... Uh, the routine was a little bit more, um, less intense, shall we say. Um, so anyway, when the war broke out, it was on HMS Antony. Now, if you've ever heard of HMS Antony, it's probably in the list of destroyers supporting the Hood and Prince of Wales in the Battle of the Denmark Strait. Uh, he was certainly there for that. Um, you won't necessarily know that during during his time, up until 1942 on, on HMS Antony, he also did seven trips to uh, Dunkirk, um, which was almost more than in any other ship. Um, two attacks by a Stuka, one where he could have sworn at the age of 21 that he was about to lose his life. He saw it diving out, he saw it releasing the bombs. If it wasn't for the quick thinking of the captain who swung the, the ship to port, the, he were, absolutely would have been hit and, and, and the ship would have sunk. As it happened, it just, uh, the explosion next to the hull, dismounted the um, engine from its mountains and they limped home um, for a refit and um, I think that's when he proposed to his wife and in Portsmouth and so on and so forth. But then later there was Spitsberg and the city of Benares uh, rescued. There's some pa some beautiful Pathé news actually on YouTube of, um, if you type in city of Benares, you'll see this um, ship with these little schoolboys on. Um, it's quite an interesting uh, story and he remembers it very well. Now, because of the sensor, it's referred to as um, a warship, but that's HMS Antony. Um, but also he was there at the Battle of the Denmark Strait. And um, what happened was Antony was sent to refuel at Iceland. So he sort of missed the battle, but they had the commentary of what was going on. They were, they were speeding over to the battle um, when Hood and Bismarck um, engaged, and they were rigged for for, for rescue, uh, taking on rescues, um, and they were speeding along when they heard the news. And my grandfather said, "I don't believe that." It was a shock to them uh, when the Hood sunk. Um, and then later on, um, he uh, Anthony um, escorted the Prince of Wales back to Iceland after she finally disengaged. And my grandfather said, "She, she was absolutely battered. She was low in the water. She was a proper mess." 
the Prince of Wales, more so than we probably uh, understand, because obviously um, the, the truth of the damage wasn't, wasn't shared at the time. And, um, and he says the whole thing was very demoralising, much more so than, than even Dunkirk, which really was a, a naval operation to save the army. Um, and what happened in the Denmark Strait were, was, was the Royal Navy's Pearl Harbour uh, in, in reality. So, to mark the 80th anniversary of the sinking of the Hood, I'm going to pause all of my builds very, very briefly um, and build a model of HMS Anthony, uh, which will be a labour of love for me. It's a little resin kit, it's 1700 scale, won't take long to build, um, but we'll be doing that in May. So that's one of the things that's coming in May. So other than fly, there won't be any new builds starting in May. We'll be concentrating on pushing on what we've got. Um, with a real focus on those on those ships, and I'd like to think we get the roadster finished um, in May. Even if we don't, we will launch the first videos um, at some point in May of HMS Fly, even if it's at the back end of the month. We will, however, do some reviews, um, and those reviews will probably be focused on what's coming next after these builds. So. Um, War Spike. When War Spike finishes, I'm going to um, launch a series of builds that are going to be called Classic Builds. Um, that's because we're going to be building very old model kits. And we're going to start with that. 1600 um, HMS Hotspur. Um, this kit is older than me. This box is older than me. Um, it's a very early run kit I've got here and as you will see the plastic parts are lovely and crisp um, so yeah a um, little tree not a sprue tree of parts um, but also my favorite model etch manufacturer does a set of photo etch for hotspur so we'll be using that it's mainly rails couple of ladders, bits and pieces like that, anchor chain maybe, um, but it's going to really enhance um, that model kit. So we're going to start with that and then we're going to follow it on with this bad boy, Admiral Scheer, the only German capital ship other than Prince Eugen still in existence in the Second World War, um, sort of. She does exist, she's just buried, you can't see her, she's underground, believe it or not. If you don't believe me, um, go, and, go and check that out on YouTube, there is a YouTube video about it. But she's, she is buried um, currently, her hull, um, the bits they couldn't scrap. Uh, and obviously Prince Eugen is upside down after nuclear tests by the Americans, um, sticking out of the water there. But we were going to build this, and now Hella are re-releasing a lot of stuff at the moment, or there's a lot of Hella kits being re-released. Um, and some of the ships have been released. Whether they're going to do this, I don't know, but I really hope they do. Um, so we will do a first impressions video. There's lots of people coming, have been coming back to the hobby during the pandemic who would have remembered this. This would have been on the shelf and maybe out of reach as, as kids. And now they've come back to the hobby. This might be something they want to build. So we'll have a look at what you get in the box. And I have a white ensign um, photo etch set for this. No decks or anything like that. We'll we'll go old school and paint the decks. Um, but yeah, let's build that. It's one four hundred scale, so it's not massive. Um, being an old kit, it's not going to be massively detailed, so it should go together um, fairly quickly. But let's see what we can do with one of these older kits, and that's the whole point. Classic build. Um, let's see what we can get out of it. So. First impressions video will be coming along in May. Build won't be starting until after Hotspur and that won't be starting until after Wolf Spy. Then, when the Lysander finishes, we'll be doing this. Airfixers 148 Hawker Hurricane Tropical. Um, and as soon as this came out, I nabbed it because I like the tropical uh, markings and camouflage. Um, they've subsequently brought out their new tool, Spitfire, um, which has our North African uh, markings as well, which is similar, using the same paints. And um, that is in the progress of being built with my daughter at the moment. We, we're putting decals on on Sunday. Um, so 
yeah, so this will also be a, f a first impressions video during the month. I'll give you a sneak peek, however. So, take the instructions out. Take the big egg set out. Take the decals out. Look at that. It is really nice. It's really nice. I don't I mean, I don't want to get ahead of the first impressions video. It's really nice. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing a first impressions video of that and possibly June, finish the Lysanda, we will start the um, tropical hawk hurricane. Now I know everyone loves a Spitfire and Spitfires get done to death and hurricanes get done to death, but I prefer a hurricane to a Spitfire. The, the real um, Battle of Britain uh, war winning weapon for me. Um, for a lot of historians actually but we're going to do this in the north african um setup i think it's going to be a beautiful build looking forward to it so the other first impressions video that we're definitely going to do uh, and there might be one or two others yet because i have some that i've recorded but haven't been released and i might squeeze in the famo tank transporter as well but we're definitely going to do this 1700 flyhawk prince of wales this kit is mental absolutely mental um, you get three sheets of etch in it you get some um, wooden barrels you get a badge prince of wales coat of arms that's almost bigger than the kit bizarre but what's mental about it and if you've bought a fly up upgrade set you know the amount of etch they can chuck out a kit is bonkers i mean really feel your lumps as you pay your money out it is bonkers and I have one for the Sharn Horse, and I'll perhaps do a do a review just to show you how bonkers it is. But but this comes with all sorts of resin parts. They're the mushroom vents for the deck of a 1700 model kit. They are not a millimetre by not a millimetre. They're absolutely... I can't see them with my reading glasses on. I can barely see them with my magnifying glasses on. And I'm supposed to paint them and glue them in the right position. Mm. Okay, I'll show you what, what we mean when we do the first impressions video. Lovely kit, beautiful kit, blows a, a Tamiya 1700 kit out of the water. But it's bonkers, it's proper bonkers. Anyway, we'll show you what that looks like. And like I say, uh, there may be one or two others as well. Uh, I know some of you are getting a bit fed up of the first impressions videos because that means you go out and buy more kits, but... Uh, so that's sort of what's coming in May. We've got the anniversary build. Um, we've got um, we've got those first impressions builds, and we're going to crack on with with what we're already doing. Um, and in the introduction to that anniversary build, we'll talk about um, my sort of labour of love model kits. I have a um, small number of model kits that I desperately want to build. Um, while I'm still on the planet and um, uh, and that's all linked to what we'll be talking about in this anniversary build uh, which will be in honour of my grandfather um, and the 80th anniversary of the sinking of the hood in Bismarck so I'm looking forward to that, it should be fun we'll tell a little bit of story um, running up to that um, my, my great uncle Ben who was also in the Navy my grandfather was one of three brothers all during the Navy um, there's quite a story between, between, behind the three brothers that sort of leads into to what we're doing. So that'll be really good fun. Right. Um, what else? Oh, subscribers and shout outs. So in the past, um, what I've done is I've mentioned one or two subscribers by name and said, look, really thanks for, for all your support and um, uh, your comments and so on and so forth. Um, we've got to the point now where I'm at, 150, 60 subscribers, um, and it's feeling a little bit unfair now to pick out that because I have sub subscribers um, that are regularly making comments and always have, and I've got some new subscribers that are making comments regularly and occasionally, um, and I've got old subscribers that um, are looking in, don't like to leave a comment, just like to watch the videos, uh, and you know what? However you want to go about watching these videos and, and whatever comes out on my channel, that's brilliant. That's fine by me. The fact that you want to listen to, to me waffle on, you know, uh, 
Thank you very much. It, it's very flattering. Um, I, everything I do um, is is true to my hobby, basically. Um, so I'm not going to do things that I uh, that people ask me to do um, that I don't feel comfortable doing. If I don't think I've got the knowledge on it, I'm not going to blag it and pretend to do. I'm going to say no, I can't do that. Um, what what I am going to do is be honest. I'm not the best model builder in the world. I just enjoy it. Uh, what you'll get out of my videos is seeing how kits go together, seeing how I go about it. You might be able to apply the theory better than I can in practice. Um, but there you go. Uh, it, it's I, I'm sharing what I enjoy, and the fact that people are watching my videos and increasing numbers means that they enjoy that as well. And, uh, and I try and add a bit of variety because I know some people are interested in the ships and are only interested in the aircraft. Um, and some people are only interested in the ships and not the aircraft and, and, and so on and so forth. But there's a little bit of there for everybody and I try and rotate my builds um, and my re video releases so that if it was a ship that was released last time, it won't be a ship that's released next time and, and, so, on and, and so on and so forth. So you get the general idea. Um, but I'm really grateful for all of you for, for, for subscribing, so I'm not going to mention anybody by by name this month and probably we won't do that going forward unless I get you know I, I need to shout someone out because they've gone the extra mile to help me out with something I didn't know so like last month we mentioned uh, the gentleman that sent me the photographs on the Arizona um, you know a real special thanks for that really really helpful um, but yeah keep sharing your views these the the, the comments section underneath those videos it's not just for pointing out to me that my lighting is not as good as it could be you, you could go in there and 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 start a conversation and, and you know there's lots of people say i agree with you this and i disagree with you that brilliant because then other people can look at what you're saying and it just sparks some debate and if we have some some chat in the comments that, that that's brilliant and people come along and, and drop comments on videos two, three, four weeks later, and that, you know, that, that's brilliant. I do read them all. I don't necessarily get to them straight away. I try my best every day to, to get on there, but um, working life and other things can get in the way. Um, but, you know, uh, as subscribers, you're all different. You all get something different out of the hobby. You all get something different out of my channel. Uh, I'm just very grateful to you all. Um, big thank you. Um, lots more to come, so uh, keep watching. You never know. If uh, some of these videos aren't your taste at the moment, the next thing, HMS Fly, for example, may well be. Um, so, yeah, I know there's some people looking forward to that very much. So, lots more coming. Big thanks to all my subscribers. Now, like you guys, I also watch YouTube videos. Um, I have them on in the background when, when I'm modelling and not recording. I have them on in the background when I'm uh, working. Um, so there's some that I watch every day, like um, uh, the, the the model ship from Calvary. Uh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Best thing on YouTube. Um, watch that regularly. I, I always watch Nigel's uh, as they come out. He's doing more stuff on his Land Rover channel at the moment. Um, but, you know, totally, totally get that. Um, so that's quite interesting to see. If you didn't know he had a Land Rover channel, he's, he's stripping and rebuilding a Land Rover. So... Uh, go and have a look at that. It's quite interesting. Um, something I'd never do. I couldn't do it, so it's quite interesting to watch. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing most of you have been um, uh, watching the model shed, but if you haven't, if you've not been watching the model shed, um, he's just released a video, uh, a, an inbox review of Ravel's um, 1144 scale flower class Corvette. Now, you'll have just seen that in, in my um, shelf quins um, uh, up there. So he's about to build that, but he's going to do it with Pontos. I'm using the Edward set. The Pontos set is much more comprehensive. So I'm really interested to see when he gets the Pontos set, what that looks like um, and what that, how that's going to build up. So um, if, you've, if you've missed that, definitely worth going to see, see that. Um, Peter Oxley. Um, now... He has a lot of videos review, he's reviewing stuff, and I can't remember whether I've mentioned him before, but if you haven't looked at his channel, um, he's, it's mainly aircraft stuff. Um, but uh, go and have a look. He does some very good reviews, and, they, and they, they, they come out fairly regularly. So 
it, it's you know if you've not got a video to watch it's always worth going to have a look at what he's got uh, in his if you go click on his videos and see what's in there and um, there's always something quite interesting in there um, certainly got some interesting views on the Tamiya uh, 148 Spitfire which is worth um, digging out um, then also DN models which is uh, uh, no I'm gonna pronounce this wrong probably uh, Mitko Nikitov, I think, think, think that's right. Uh, so DN models, he's he has some very um, um, strong views on it on his modelling, and I generally agree a lot with what he says. And he has some really interesting videos. But he's just released one um, looking at the value of bargain basement airbrushes uh, against the high price airbrushes. That's really quite interesting, and he makes some very interesting points. Um, and if you're fairly new to the hobby and you're thinking about buying an airbrush, definitely a video to, to go and see. So um, yeah, I'll try and remember to put the links in to these once this video is uploaded. Um, right, Peter's Plastic Playground. Now I have to own up here, um, the recent um, um, review that I did um, of the Thunderbirds uh, kit um, came off the back of his channel so um, I was watching through the videos of his channel uh, and he did a sort of a, an inbox review of Thunderbirds 2 um, and the one that I subsequently bought so I didn't realize they'd come out saw what he'd done immediately tracked down a kit um, from the um, Jerry Anderson store actually which turned out to be the cheapest um, the kits are all about the same price but but the shipping was cheaper than anywhere else um, and uh, I went and bought that kit and did a review. So it's sort of thanks to him that we did that review, which people were genuinely quite interested in. So um, go and check out his channel. What he does have, he has a genuine, it's the best beginner's uh, video series I've ever seen. Um, it's really difficult as an experienced modeler, um, it's really difficult to put your mindset in someone who's never picked up a model before and understand how to build a model. And when you watch um, uh, beginners' videos, a lot of them fall into this same same trap, and it's one of the reasons why I've not done sort of beginners' videos, um, because the the you end up going right now you've got this ten pound model kit, you just need to nip out and buy a thirty pound cutting mat, and you'll need to buy yourself these expensive um, exacto knives and um, and with my airbrush, I'm just going to paint this. And you forget, when you started off building models, you had the model kit, you had your mum's nail file, you had a pen knife, um, you, you maybe had some toothpicks, cocktail sticks, for stirring the paint, um, and you had some paintbrushes, and you had some paint, and you had that stringy, thick tube glue, and that's all you had. And yet we managed to put models together, believe it or not. Um, so... When you're thinking about it from a beginner's, it's, as an experienced model, it's very, very difficult. And um, Peter's Plastic Playground, I think, nails it. They're very short little videos, um, good for the attention span. You can pause it, rewind it. You're not losing where you are in the build because the videos aren't too long. Um, and I thought they were done really, really well. So, um, But he's got other stuff on there as well. Um, it's got a nice uh, airfield diorama, for example. So... Definitely worth going and, and checking out his videos. That's Peter's Plastic Playground. Um, and then um, Chango, or Chango, not sure. Um, he's building a 1200 Bismarck and he's doing a fantastic job of it. Um, he's not got many subscribers, um, so it's a bit under a lot of people's radar, um, but definitely worth digging him out. Um, he's doing a splendid job of it. Looks really nice. He's not got many videos, but they're, they're all around this one two hundred Bismarck build. Definitely worth going to have a look. Um, if you go to those channels and you decide to subscribe, then just you know um, do what a lot of you did when you subscribed to my channel after um, uh, Nigel said go and check me out, um, and you said oh Nigel sent us over. Go and do that from from point of view of the channel owner it's good to know who uh, who's seen their stuff and where people are coming from um, in addition to what you get on the analytics 
So if you do subscribe to the channel, just pop, pop him a note under one of his videos and say, hi, come over um, on the back of a recommendation from Love Lucky Stuff. Brilliant. So I think that is it. April is coming to an end. And um, unfortunately, that means model building will slow down a little bit because we're allowed to get out and about a little bit more. And one thing that all of us in the family here are desperate to do is go and see the world. Um, so uh, going out a little bit more means staying in a little less, which means time here a bit less. So um, putting all of that to one side, um, we've got lots still coming in May, looking forward to May, looking forward to getting to grips with HMS Fly um, and getting the roads to finish and, and bits and pieces. Um, and I want to get that war spot finished because I really, really want to get stuck into that. Can't wait. Can't wait. Right. Enough from me. Enough waffle. Um, if I forget to put the links in, someone send me a reminder um, in the comments because um, sometimes these can come up and I'm busy and then I forget about it. My memory does not get any better with age. Right. Thanks everybody for looking in um, and if you're a new subscriber thanks very much and um, I, it gives you an idea of some of the madness that, that goes on here at Model Kit Stuff. Um, take care everyone, look after yourselves, enjoy your modelling and we will see you very very soon. Take care.